so my name is Elena Francesca Engel, and I'm the director and producer of uh, the short documentary John Leguizamo Live at Rikers, uh, which I did with John back in New York a while ago. And uh, we are here in Santa Barbara. I live here, and this is incredibly special for me to be here and, and, and showing this to you know, my people here. So um, we're very excited. We had a world premiere at Tribeca, and we've been in a number of other film festivals, but this, to me, is incredibly special. So um, I'm very excited to be sharing it with people. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. And uh, welcome, by the way, to Santa Barbara. Thank you. Thank um, you. Tell us, so we're always curious, what are the challenges? But doing it at Rikers, was, did that pr oh, present man. special problems? Jeez. Well, we were advocates, we were advocates for an um, um, uh, organization called Getting Out and Staying Out, which is an anti-recidivist organization in Harlem. And John and I met at a party, and we decided we wanted to do something to show these guys humanity and their dignity, to give them dignity, and to entertain them in a place where you don't get entertained very often. So it only took me five months to convince the DOC to allow me to go in many wow. meetings. Then we have 500 inmates that watched his play, Ghetto Clown, and then he met with a number of them, and lots of hopes and dreams and amazing emotions and, and openness came out of it, and it was just beautiful. My name is Michael Love, I'm the director. This is Lisa Stratton, who is the director of the actual restoration. So this is a project which is about a golf course which was turned back into the ancestral wetland it used to be, a really rare good news story for the environment in today's world. And it's such a community project, it's a grand collaboration between all sorts of people in the university, professors, students, who all work together to make this unbelievable uh, restoration happen. And uh, Lisa minutes, was a huh? director of that. She's like the orchestra director that brought all these people together, found the funding, which was not easy, <laughs> believe me, and uh, and then pretty much produced it all like a movie. So I chronicled that over a period of almost 10 years between some other projects I was doing, and uh, this was the year to pull it all together, and uh, we had the grand opening of the uh, wetland and uh, a Chumash blessing, which was really apropos because the film begins with the Chumash history of the use of these wetlands that were ancestral to Santa Barbara around the airport in that area. There was a lot of them, and they've all been filled in. So it's amazing to have this actually uh, project come to fruition. It sounds fabulous. Thank you so much. Thanks sure. for talking to us. My pleasure. All right. Yeah. Thank Good you. luck with the film. Hi, I'm Leslie Champagne, the director of Call Me Dancer. Okay, and can you tell us a little bit about the film? Yes, Call Me Dancer is a documentary. It follows the story of Manish, a young Indian young man who is, comes from humble beginnings and wants to become a professional dancer. And I followed him for over five years as he made it to New York and to the global stage. It sounds like a great success story. That's it fantastic. Is. It's a happy wow. story. It's a happy story. <laughs> nice, nice. Are you involved in the film as well? Yes, I'm a producer. My oh. name's Laurie Werrix, and Leslie and I were professional dan dancers together in Europe. So. Wow. Right. Fantastic. So that's where, what drew us to the story, because we, I was a, a ballet dancer, and Laurie was a dancer too, and um, later then became a filmmaker. It's my very first film. Uh, first film I'm directing. It's not the first yeah. film I've worked on. Um, yeah. Good luck. That's fantastic. Story. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about your challenges. Uh, challenges. Uh, raising money. <laughs> raising money. <laughs> raising but, money was hard. Yes. But also just the time framing and COVID. Yes. That was hard. That was very so hard. It was also hard because we're telling the story of an athlete, and so for around the world, um, all athletes were. Um, they were sidelined, and you can't you can't stop training as a dancer or as an athlete during COVID. So it destroyed so many people's careers. And there were little accidents or things that happened with the body that we had to stop with. Oh yeah. no! So, but uh, yeah, for the most part, it's it's an amazing story that shows what art can do. It shows you how important things are with with dancing and to be able to do art and show your love. And he was supposed to be a, a taxi car driver. His father was a taxi car driver. Oh, wow. So that's kind of the storyline. Then he wanted to go into the art world and you have to have a responsibility 
in uh, some places that, uh, especially in India, you have to follow what your parents want you to become. So. Wow. He it was that that was a challenge. It was an uphill for climb him. for him. Yeah, huh? it was an uphill climb for him. That's yes. right. Yeah. That's, but he's that's so great. beautiful and he's so talented and so, yeah, amazing dancer. It's an amazing dancer. It's a beautiful feel good story. Make your dreams come true and you can make them happen, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. Well I look forward to seeing it. Thank you so much Thank for talking so to much. us. It's Thanks so much. Tomorrow at seven thirty. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. All right, so much. Bye bye. Thanks very much. Thank you. Ethan Pakakawa. Uh, my name is Michael Lee, and our film is Whale Roads. It's a short documentary film about whale ship strikes happening right off the coast here in Santa Barbara and all up and down the coast from Baja, Mexico to California to Oregon to Washington. And uh, what we really wanted to do is shine a light on the issue. These huge container ships carrying just crate after crate of goods are coming. They're cruising at high speed through the waters and actually hitting blue whales, humpback whales, fin whales. And um, so we just wanted to shine the light on the issue, um, obviously the beautiful animals, but mostly the people that are doing something to make a difference. Well, that's a great, great uh, subject there. Yeah. How did you, how did you get it, decide on that? Yeah, so it was actually the inaugural uh, program of the Coastal Media Project uh, here at UCSB. We're both students. I guess Michael's graduated now, but at the time we were both students last summer. And um, you know, it's just an issue that we think deserves more light. Um, you know, it's sort of a strange story. I'm from Minneapolis originally, but I was like, I think my third or fourth word was actually whale, and I had a, a cute little like plastic whale. And so, you know, I've always just been personally really blown away by those creatures. And I think, you know, all of us on the crew definitely thought it was just a fascinating subject to dive deeper into. Yeah, absolutely. So, can you give us a, a little inside story here of like how many whales are damaged? I mean, how many people, how many whales are killed? Yeah, sure. So. You know, it's actually kind of a tricky thing to estimate because the ships are, you know, you think of whales as being these huge creatures, and obviously the blue whale being the biggest creature that we've seen on Earth. I mean, and these ships just dwarf them. So oftentimes, to be honest, those ships don't even know that they've hit the whale or killed the whale. But scientific estimates have been, you know, they sort of range a little bit, but about maybe 80, 80 whales a year just off the, the western coast, and then likely even more off the eastern coast or sort of Maine to New England, that area. So it's, it's really a big issue, and frankly, we don't have that many whales left, especially some species, so yeah. it's certainly an issue to look into. That's so sad. Wow. Yeah. So was it hard to get access to the whales, to get footage? I mean, yeah, obviously, you know, it's hard to choreograph, you know, like 80-foot creatures. Um, but um, we actually worked with uh, Captain Dave, um, who's a, a whale-watching captain here at the Condor Express right off the coast, and he took us out. He was very generous and took um, the crew out, so we were able to get some footage from them but then also worked with his videographer and, and Noah for some footage as well. Yeah, world premiere. Fantastic. Yeah, we're psyched to be here. Great. Well, good luck with it. Thank Very you. Very excited. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Look course. forward to seeing it. Thank you. Uh, I'm David Robinson-Smith, and I directed the film Mud Crab. Uh, it's an Australian short film. It's about trauma and memory. It's about a boy who is assaulted, and then many years later, a woman is reflecting on that and kind of thinking about her culpability within the assault. And how did you come to make this film? Uh, the film was made in Australia. It's about where I grew up. Uh, it's called the Central Coast of Australia. It's very, very different to the Central Coast of Santa Barbara, but it still is very exciting to be playing here. Um, yeah, it's just about people I knew growing up there, uh, many different people, many family members, uh, people who experienced different things and the, and the, the way their, the outcome of their lives played out after that. Interesting. And big challenges in the film? Uh, one of the biggest challenges was that our actor had to put on and lose 30 kilos for the role. So mm -hmm. the first half was shot and then we had to kind of have a huge break and we shot the ending of the film first. Then he had a three month break for him to lose 30 kilos uh, and shoot the beginning of the film. So it gets wow. quite complex at that he's stage. He's very committed. Yeah, he's a very, very committed actor. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, Joshua Mehmet, yeah, he's, he really killed it. Wow. <laughs> I'll have to let Daniel Day-Lewis know that he's got competition now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's coming. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That's fabulous. So, um, is, have you been taking it around the world? or? Yes, uh, we played in um, London and York and Australia, all over, and now this is our U.S. premiere. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, we're happy to have you here in Santa Barbara. Ah, we're loving it. Santa Barbara that's rocks. Right. <laughs> yeah. cool. Thanks very much. And you were the cinematographer? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Any special challenges? Oh, 
it's just definitely in the gap between the two halves. It's really hard to like keep consistency lighting wise yeah. and like tonally. Oh, I'm having a break that large, yeah. um, but it was it was successful. I thought. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks much. for talking to us. Good luck with your U.S. Open. Thank you so much. Thank you. When we go through things like rainstorms and mudslides and whatnot, then you have this film festival, which is like a shining star in the middle of our winter here. We are basically a hospitality industry city, and to have this film festival this time of year just couldn't be better. I'm Michelle Danner. I'm the director of the movie Miranda's Victim that's premiering tonight here at the beautiful Arlington Theater in the Santa Barbara International Film Festival. How did you come to be the director of this film? They uh, asked me. <laughs> they sent me an email on a Sunday night. I distinctly remember the moment because I went, oh, this is interesting. Oh, this is right up my alley. They must know that I'm passionate about crime and you know, mystery. And, and so I answered right away. I was like, yeah, I'd like to read it. And the rest is history. That's fantastic. And I'm sure it was smooth sailing from that moment, right? Well, you know, nothing is smooth sailing when you make a movie, but I have to say that this is as good as it got. This was just, from the beginning, the, with this cast, the filming, the post, everything was just incredible. That's fantastic. Were you affected by COVID? Um, I was affected, but not too much. I was able to be very productive and uh, creative. Were you filming during COVID? Yes, and that was a pain because you had to wear masks and I did get sick, but uh, I didn't get COVID. But I wore a clear mask and the smoke got inside. I was trying to have the actress see my lips and instead, well, you know, I got sick, but I'm fine now. Oh, thank goodness. So what was your biggest challenge with making the movie? Oh, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> there was no other big challenge. There the movie went smooth sailing. I just was lucky enough, I had a cast to end all casts, and, then, and I had a great story to tell. What else What else can you want? Yeah. Can you introduce it? Yes, yeah, tell us a little bit about the story. The story is about um, Trish Weir, who was kidnapped and had to come forth and seek justice for her assault in 1963 in Phoenix, Arizona. And now I assume this all connects to the Miranda rights. Oh yeah. So <laughs> this is the true story of Patricia Weir from her perspective when she suffered a kidnapping and it gave birth to you know her case gave birth to the Miranda rights. That's fantastic. That's great. Well, thank you so much. We're very excited to see you. Hello, I'm John Buffalo Mailer here with Miranda's victim at the Santa Barbara Film Festival. Yeah. And what's the role you play, John? I play uh, the assistant prosecutor, Andrew, opposite Luke Wilson. And, uh, nice. What, what, what a delight to get to work with that gentleman. Yeah, absolutely. What, what were your challenges in the, being involved in the film? I, this was one of those movies that's just a dream to work on. You go to work every day with some of your heroes and uh, get into a period piece shooting on film. That was just incredible. Um, so the challenges uh, was to, to not get in anyone's way. That was the challenge. <laughs> That's fantastic. Great. So any, any upcoming films after this? Anything we should be looking out for you? Uh, actually developing a uh, series about my father, Norman Mailer, based on uh, Norman Mailer, Double Life, by J. Michael Lennon, that James Gray is directing. So. Wow. That's, That's next on the roster. Very nice. Yeah, wow. Good luck with that. Thank you so much. Hey, nice talking to you. Thanks very much. Hi, I'm Roland Josh there. Bowman. I play Charles Shumway, who is um, Trish's husband, played by Abigail Breslin. Um, you know, we shot this last summer in uh, New Jersey. It's, you know, uh, Miranda's right, right. Uh, and which I had no idea about, uh, that there was this emanates from a story um, where a man uh, called Ernesto Miranda uh, raped uh, Trish Shumway, who was my wife, played by Abigail Breslin, um, and this went to a court case. Um, he then um, said that he didn't have a lawyer, so he then got the, which, th that's how the Miranda's rights were born. And so he obviously lost the court case, and, and you'll see the film 
Yeah. It's much better articulated than I could ever articulate it. It was a year ago. Now I'm thinking, Jesus, what was the film about? But I, no, you did great. But I play a character that's you know sort of stuck in that time in the '60s and um, very conservative. Um, someone who thought of himself in a certain way and it's, we're playing real people so it was uh, it was an interesting sort of little journey to go on um, but something I personally have no idea about um, obviously we all know Miranda's right but we didn't know I didn't know that there, there was a you know, this right, was a story. born from a, from a real We should start again, shouldn't we? We should start again with my wife, because she uh, erased that one. Let's start again. Tell us about the movie. How did you get in, How did you get attracted to play your part? Yeah. Um, well, I, I already sort of started. It was a really poor, poor... But I mean, okay, you know... So he, had, so he was presented the script. Michelle knew about Josh. And they were looking also to, for the sister of Anne. Uh, Trish, sorry. We're Anne. married, by the way, we're in real married. life. And then I ended up reading the script because Michelle was interested in me doing the film and we just kind of fell in love with it and also we're very shocked that this story was never told and had no idea, you know, you never think about what the Miranda rights Absolutely. mean, you know. Yeah. Um, and so it was just really fascinating and, uh, and we were just honored to be a part of telling the story and Abby is just extraordinary in it and Michelle did such a wonderful job and it's just, um, it's always nice to then get to present the film at a festival like this on opening night. It's just really cool. Absolutely. Well, so how have you done other films together? This is our first film together. First film. And how was it? It was great. We yeah. barely worked we together. together. One That's why it was be, great. One of us had to be home with baby, so, gotcha. um, so it was great. But we got to, you know, put the whole family together in New Jersey while we shot, and it was, it was a really cool, wonderful experience. Did you first meet? Work, work oh, on, years ago, yeah. Um, we've been show, together yeah. 12 TV years. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, TV show Revenge back in the day. Um, still going strong, so here we are. That's fantastic. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming to Santa Barbara. Thanks. Welcome to the 38th Annual Santa Barbara International Film Festival here in Santa Barbara, California. Hi, guys. My name is Sebastian Quinn. I'm playing, um, playing Ernesto Miranda in the film Miranda's Victim. And uh, it's premiering at Santa Barbara Film Festival. I'm really happy to be here. And, um, thank you. I hope you like the movie. Tell us about getting cast for the movie. Was it? Oh, I mean, come about. Initially, it was pretty. I was one of the last people to be cast, and it was pretty intimidating joining, you know, a cast with Andy Garcia, Donald Sutherland, Abigail Breslin, um, Emily Van Camp, Luke Wilson. Uh, I grew up watching all of them, and you know, I definitely have the shortest career span out of all of them, so I'm, I couldn't be happier to join, but also quite intimidated, but everyone was so nice, they made it a wonderful experience for me, I have That's to fantastic. say. fantastic, yeah. That's great. And so, yeah. what, what were your other film credits before this? Before that, um, I did a movie called Latin in, in Manhattan, um, it's another indie that is doing the festival circuit right now, and then um, I did some TV appearances on NCIS, Dynasty. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And you have things lined up for the future? Yes. I'm going to be on a Peacock show called uh, Based on a True Story with Kaylee Cuoco and Chris Messina. It's really nice. And uh, there's a Christmas family movie called um, Family League with Jennifer Garner for Netflix that nice. I have a fun little part in. You're keeping good company there. Yeah. No, it's very great. Good. I have to say, this, this movie was very good luck for me. Where are you from originally? Um, I was born in Greece. I'm half Australian for my mom, but I went to school in London and then New York. Yeah. And, and how did you get into the business? I don't have any family who's in the business. I have to say, I started with theater as a kid, and that drew me in, and it infected me like a virus, <laughs> and then I can't get rid of it. Yeah. Great. Well, yeah. sounds like you're on your way. Thanks for talking Thank to you. me. Thank you. Yes, so I will. Okay. Thanks very much. Welcome, Ryan. Tell us about getting cast in this movie. It's a great... Um, I read the script, I really loved it, um, and I told them I was interested. Um, it's a great character, really different for me, very, um, really flamboyant defense attorney who represents Miranda, and it's, it, was, uh, it was a fun part to play. That's awesome, yeah. that's great. Any challenges for you in the film? Um, just the legalese, learning, you know, really long pages of courtroom di dialogue, but it was fun. It was a good challenge. That's awesome. Yeah. What, what do you have in store next? Oh, I've got a lot of stuff. A couple movies out right now, and I start filming in uh, two months. And 
Thank you. Fantastic. Hello, Mr. Andy Garcia, how are you tonight? Yes. I'm doing good. I'm doing pretty good. Great, great. It's a little family you have here on this movie, huh? A big family. Uh, well, uh, yeah, it's a big ensemble movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're proud of the movie, you know. It's, it's, you know how difficult it is to get movies made, especially independently, you know. And it takes everybody to chip in and participate and help out. And, and uh, what is an important story? And it's important to get the tale. What brought you to this movie? The story. The story and the importance of the story. The material. People, you know, speaking with Michelle. And, you know, just kind of, it has a good, when you see something that's important, that has a good vibe about it, there's a reason why it needs to exist. Yep. You want to try to help any way you can. Too much to talk about? Uh, I got plenty to talk about, but tonight is about Miranda, not about me. Man. How did you come to be involved in the film and actually have the title role? Um, well, I got um, I, I got an email basically saying that uh, there was a script that I might want to read. I was a little bit trepidatious about it, given the the subject matter. Um, it's a lot to tackle. Yeah, serious. Um, yeah. As an actor, but um, once I met with Michelle Danner, the director, who's amazing, um, I really felt like she was going to do it in a in a in a way that would be doing justice to a very important story um, that's actually really historic that not a lot of people know about. So um, by that point, I really couldn't resist. That's fantastic. And what was your biggest challenge in doing the film? I guess, um, you know, unfortunately one in four women in their life will be assaulted, which is a really upsetting statistic. Absolutely. Um, and I unfortunately have been... Uh, a victim of that myself, wow. so survivor now. But um, <laughs> so this was very personal for you. Was personal for me, and I felt um, that you know those voices need to be heard. So when I can help with that, uh, it's meaningful. Where can we find you? That's amazing. Thank, Thank you. you so much.